came by the cross. All right, now, I'm using this because when I go to Ephesians here, uh, you in Ephesians, uh, let's, let's back up to verse 5. Uh, I'm sorry, verse 4 now. We were, now back up to Ephesians 2, 4. We're going to go in now and read Ephesians 2, 4 through 8. Because this is our subject. We were, all right, we were saved by the cross. Not at the cross, by the cross. Now, I'm going to show you that you want to write down another verse after everything I've given you. You want to put down 1 Corinthians uh, chapter number 2. Let me find the verse. 1 Corinthians chapter number 2, and you want to put down there verse number 6. And you want to put down there from verse 6 through verse number 8. All right? Now, we're going to go through the scriptures I have given you. My, my subject, once again, you were saved by the cross. Remember, I said not at the cross, and I'm going to show you why. Because we got a song out, at the cross. It sounds good, but it's not saved at the cross, because there's a whole lot of folk with at the cross. That don't mean they're saved. You were saved by the cross. What God did on the cross, the word cross means death. You were saved by his death. All right. Israel was saved by his life. When the Lord returned is how they got their salvation. But we were saved by his cross, by his death. All right. Now, let's go to work. I gave you some things. Let's go through them now. Galatians chapter 2 and verse 20. Now, in Galatia 20, we are getting messages. See, we are headed to, to our Easter service, Sunday morning service. See, most people will wait till Sunday to come to church for Easter because they all they want to know about resurrection, but they don't know nothing about how you got there. And so that's why I'm teaching you how you got there. You, if you don't know how you got there, you, don't know how to, you won't know how to be grateful and thankful. All you know, I'm, I'm, I'm alive and you, everything is resurrection. But there's a whole lot of stuff happening for that resurrection morning. All right, let's go to Galatia. And we're going to look at uh, chapter 2. We're going to look at verse 20 and 21. Because we want to show you in verse 21 that the law could not save you. Remember everything I'm showing you that you're saved by the cross. Now, that's why in this church we do not call ourselves a soul winning church. When you say saved, you talk about souls. That's why uh, 1 Peter 3.20, you write that down. Hopefully we get a chance to go to that. Eight souls were saved during the days of Noah. This is the key. The Old Testament was only about saving souls. That was fulfilled at the cross. Now these two things you need to put down and we're going to explore them. The Old Testament was about saving of souls, which happened at the cross. It was fulfilled at the cross. The New Testament is about spirit salvation. Old Testament is about soul salvation. So if you can understand two things, you can rightly divide the word. Old Testament was about soul salvation. It was not about spirit salvation. Nobody in the Old Testament had the spirit living in them. You the only one got that privilege to have the spirit li living in you if you just believe the word. And the spirit come to live inside of you so you can live for Christ. As a matter of fact, let me say it another way. So Christ can obey his own word through you. You don't have to live it now. It's Christ now that lives in us. So all we have to do is allow him to live his life through us. The hardest thing for people to do is to let him live his life through them. That's why I have to go through the teaching on the mind after this. Because all the stuff that we have got in our mind that we thought was right, all that got to go. Until we are, our souls are totally submitted unto the new life. All right? That's why the Bible says, uh, well, we're gonna, we don't want to talk about nothing else. I got, it take me off, basically. All right, now, I just gave you Galatians chapter 2 and verse 20. That's where we are. All right, let's read it, verse 20. 
I am crucified with Christ here. We already talked that, right? Say it with me. You got to say it like, you, like you're alive. I am crucified with Christ. See, that's already happened. This is what had to happen before Christ could be alive in you. You first had to be crucified with Christ. Now, the word crucified means dead. Don't think you still alive once you were crucified now. You were the thief on the cross. Remember, I gave you Luke 23. The man said to him, Lord, remember me when you're coming to your kingdom. And Jesus said, today thou shalt be with me in paradise. Remember, that was us. We were that thief on the cross. All right, but we got to understand we died with him. That day, we died with him that day. Say we died with him that day. See, that's 2,000 years ago. You gave your life that day with him. That's what you did. That thief owned him. That thief believed in him. That, trust, that thief that day said, Lord, remember me. Call him Lord that day. All right, that's when your salvation took place. Salvation is never past tense. Salvation is today. It's always got its arms out with people every day. But it's nothing you've done. See, when you have somebody say how you get your salvation, well, I confess with my mouth the Lord Jesus, and I believe in my heart that God, can't you see the eye? You, you don't see the eye? I just gave you Galatians chapter 2, verse 20, I did if we can just get our dead, say our dead. All right, so I can't be confessing to get no salvation if I did. Come on now, say I did. All right, so a dead man don't confess. You got to get that. See, the whole thing is people are saying, Galatians 2.20, I'm crucified with Christ, and still you are confessing to get salvation. How you confess to get your salvation when God, Christ, is salvation? You can't get him that way. You got, I'm, you got to listen to me real good. I need your help this morning. I need your spirit. When you worship God, you are in tune to the word. That's worship. Your mind can't be on nothing else. You got a Facebook, but don't worship it. All right, verse 20, read it again. I am crucified with Christ. Come on, I am, I am crucified with Christ. Crucified with Christ. I'm, dead. I'm dead. All right, so you dead man don't confess. All right. This man on the cross did not confess to be saved. This man on the cross was never water baptized to be saved. This man did no work. All right. I am crucified with Christ, nevertheless I live. Watch what he says, it's not you going to be living. Yet not I, but now it's Christ living in me. You got to read. I need you to read to hear for you saying. That's all it said. Christ liveth in me. And the life which I now live in the flesh, I live by the faith of the Son of God. I live by his faith. Right. You don't live by your faith. See, when you use Romans 10, 9, and 10, it's the confession of your faith. See, you can't live by your faith. That's why some translators put that as the faith of the Son of God. They translate that the faith in the Son of God. Remember, you cannot use the faith in the Son of God because when you use faith in God, it's your faith. You the one have faith in God. Some translators have put in there, trust in God. You can't you trust in, faith in, because that's yours. You live by his faith. Nothing is yours. You died. If you ever get that, man, say, I'm, I died. See, I no longer live. Come on, say, I died. I no longer live. It is Christ now that live in his life through, through me. Now give the Lord a big hand. Now in verse number 21, you're going to see the law could not say amen. Read it, verse 21. I do not frustrate the grace of God. If righteousness came by the law, then Christ is dead in vain. Otherwise, if I got to be righteous by doing something, then Christ died in vain. See, that's what the word law means by works. 
if I got to be righteous by my works, by my confession, by what I say and what I do, I was baptized, I was circumcised. See, if all this stuff, then Christ died for nothing because he died to save us. All right, let's keep going. Now, that's, that's just one thing I want to show you in Galatians chapter 2, verse 20. See, that verse is powerful. You already died. Now, let's go to Romans 6 and Romans 7. Romans 6 first and Romans 7. So, Romans 6 told you that you're dead to sin. See, when the Bible said I was crucified with Christ, I died. So, you have to understand, number one, I died to sin. Romans chapter 6. Start verse 1. Romans chapter 6, read it. What shall we say then? Shall we continue in sin that grace may abound? God forbid, straighten or not. Watch what he's going to say. How can you? Say, how can you? Watch, how can you or what? Why? Because you're what? Everybody. You are dead to sin. If I could just get you to read. Listen, this message is going to change your life if you will believe it. You got to help yourself and your own salvation to receive. That's all you got to do is help yourself to receive. Your flesh don't want this. This is salvation. is when God put his spirit in your heart. See, you already been saved, but God want to put his spirit in your heart. You will never change until God put his spirit in your heart. See, people don't understand. You don't understand right now. When, when you had the nature of Adam, that's what God took out of you, the nature of Adam. It was the sin nature. God took the sin nature out of you at the cross. My job is to preach the gospel of Christ so God, the Holy Ghost, can, the, the, the Father, Son, really the God here, can come live in your heart. He can't do it without your participation. People don't have Christ today because they won't receive. It's not that the work has not been done. They just won't receive. They just think God just going to do it himself. If you want to come in, me come up. It's not going to happen. God does not force himself to come into his own house. You must open the door. You must let him in. You must receive him. This has got to be something you want. Else you will die and spend eternity in the lake of fire. That ain't what God wants. He paid for your salvation. All you have to do is one word, believe. When you believe, you receive. But he just can't force himself on you. That's why I keep saying, you got to read. You got to have a part in your own salvation. And that's hear it and believe it. And nobody can say it better than you. All right. Now, in Romans chapter 6, uh, and verse, number, verse 2, once again, let's read together. God forbid, how shall we that are dead to sin live any longer therein? So he showed you that we are dead to sin. All I want to show you one verse. I'm not trying to read all of that. I could, but I'm not. Let's go to Romans chapter 7. Now, we're going to show you and start with verse 4. Romans chapter 7, you are dead to the law. All right, Romans chapter 7, let's read together. Wherefore, my brother, you are become dead to the law by the body of Christ. So otherwise, because Christ died for your sins, he was buried and God raised again from the dead, and now you are now dead to sin. You're not only dead to sin, you're dead to the law. Now, what else next? See, you can finish reading this. I'm not, I'm not here. Uh, well, let me read, let me read verse 4 uh, down to verse number 6. I need to read a few of those. We'll read down to verse 6. Romans 7, 4 again, read Wherefore, my beloved, my brother, you are become dead to the law by the body of Christ, that you should be married to another, even to him who is raised from the dead, that we should bring forth fruit to God. So otherwise, if you don't realize that you are dead to sin and dead to the law, you cannot receive Christ. Let me say it again. Until you confess that you are dead to sin, you are dead to the law, you cannot receive Christ in your heart. It's just like I cannot be remarried to my wife, I, not, I can't marry another if I'm still married to my wife. But once, once, once Adam died, now you can be married to Christ. How many see what he's saying? You can't be married to Christ until Adam died. Well, Adam already did. 
Remember, I died. That was Adam. Say, I died. That was Adam. Right. So the old man died. Until the old man is dead, you can't marry another. Do you see why old men have to be dead? You have to be dead to sin, dead to the law. All right, now when that happened, you can marry another, that's Christ. Now God can put Christ in your heart. All right, let's read verse, seven, verse 4 again. Wherefore, my brethren, you also are become dead to the law by the body of Christ, that you should now be married to another, even to him that's raised from the dead, that we should bring forth fruit to God. Now that word you ought to put right there is 1 Corinthians 6, 17 in your Bible. After verse 4, 1 Corinthians 6, 17. That's where we get the word joined. He that is joined to the Lord is one spirit. So you could not become joined to the Lord until you was dead to Adam, right? You was dead to sin, dead to the law. It's no different than you see somebody married. That's what he's showing you. Because people are supposed to know about marriage. You can't get married to somebody else until you're already dead to somebody else. You can't be joined to somebody and go get joined to somebody again. So you got to become dead to. The word dead to means cut off. Cut off. You're cut off to that person now. You used to be joined to them. Come on, I, come on. I know we can, we can understand stuff in the house, right? right? So now we can be joined to another. That's what marriage is. Marriage is cutting off and joining. That's all it is. So when you became... Uh, one with the Lord, you were joined to the Lord. Now, he's talking about your spirit because we're going to show you how your soul got information. All of this is going to be coming after that. Now, verse 8, read. For when we were in the flesh, past tense, that was Adam. That's why he had to die because we was in the flesh. Verse number 5. The motion of sin, which were by the law, did work in our members. See, that's why that stuff worked in your members because you were joined to that. That's why you got to become dead to that. All right, but now we are delivered from the law that being dead, see that dead again? Dead wherein we were hell, we were dead. We were dead in sins. That we should serve now in the newness of the spirit and not in the oldness of the letter. Now you can read the rest, but I'm just showing you, you got to understand that until you say I'm dead to sin, I'm dead to the law, you can't keep watching what's going on in your life. You got to stand up and say I'm dead to that. Anything that going on in your life you don't like, what do you say? Amen. I'm dead to that. That's what you got to do. Anytime sin try to work in your life, you have to stand up and say, I'm dead to that. Say, for example, you smoke. You keep trying to stop. You know how to stop? I'm dead to that. So every time the enemy try to bring something up, your flesh tell you what it wants, that's your flesh. It's not your spirit. Your flesh said, I want another cigarette. Now, come on, I've, I've been there. I've done that. When my flesh said, I want another cigarette, what do I supposed to say? Because the Christ in me got to speak up. And he have to say, I'm dead to that. When you see another woman try to lust after you, you're supposed to say, I'm dead to that. When another man try to lust after you women, what are you supposed to say? I'm dead. You got to speak up. I'm dead to that. You cannot live for Christ until you become dead to the flesh. Now, get the Lord a great big hand. See, you got to want this yourself. You got to want this yourself. That's why you got to be going to talk up and say the thing. There's a new man in the house. He's already married in your, in your spirit. He's already one with your spirit. So you got to honor him before the other men or the other women. So when they come after you, it's not your ring going to say something. It's the Christ in you. All right. You got to stand up for the truth. All right. Stand up for the Christ in you. Come on, get the Lord another big hand. I believe you heard that. All right. Where I'm going now? 2 Corinthians 5, 14. Thank you. All right. Let's go to 2 Corinthians 5. Somebody just has something ready because you know I'm coming. I'm not going to spend a lot of time. I'm just getting you to my message. 2 Corinthians chapter 5, 14. We just showed you that you're dead to sin, you're dead to the flesh, and you got to stand up and let the enemy know, I'm dead to that. Any temptation try to come against your life, I'm dead to that. Any lust, any, because you're dead to that. 
That's your old, that's your, there's no different than the old man trying to come back. I'm dead to that. He wants you back. I'm dead to that now. Huh. Are y'all listening to me? All right, I'm trying to show you how to live. See, this is what he's going to tell you. You got to live to God, live for God. You can't live for God until you're dead to that stuff. All right, verse 14, 2 Corinthians 5, 14, read. For the love of Christ constrains us because we thus judge that if one died for all, then we're all dead. See, see, I'm dead to sin. I'm dead to the law. All right, now verse number 15, read. And that it died for all, that they which live should not henceforth live unto themselves, but unto him which died for them and rose again. So when you say I'm dead to sin, what are you doing? I'm living for him. I'm dead to that. When I say I'm dead to that, that means I am living for him. And I'm not ashamed of the gospel of Christ. That's what you're saying. And until you get to this place, the Christ in you cannot come forth. Because you won't, you won't own him. You won't speak up for him. You keep denying him. That's the same thing people do with their wife. When you come to me about something, my wife sitting right over there. I let people know I've been married 54 years, 55 in Christmas. That's my wife. Well, you met my wife? What am I doing? I'm owning up to her. I'm letting people know I'm not ashamed of her. That's what you got to do with the Christ in you. He's in you. He is in love of your soul. He's the one that saved your soul, living right inside of you, and you're going to have to speak up. That's why Paul said, I'm not ashamed of the gospel of Christ. That's what he's talking about. Christ saved me, and I'm going to speak up and let people know he lives in me. All right. Now, 2 Corinthians chapter 5 and verse number 16. Let's read. Wherefore, from now on, the word henceforth said, from now on, no, I, no man after flesh. Come on, said, from now on, I know no man after flesh. So he's talking about yourself. You got to not see yourself after flesh no more. Because if any man be in Christ now, what are you now? You're a new creation. So you can't go by who you were. That was your old nature. See, what we do is we accept Christ in what we want to be our own self. You can't be your own self no more. You got to, we're going to get to that. The renewal of the mind has to take place because all that other stuff that we did when we were the old man with the old nature, that stuff got to come down. We can't keep doing that. See, that's what I'm saying. Only the new man got to come forth. Remember, you can't make this happen. You allow it to happen. When I go to Romans 10, put in your note, 1 through 4, I'm going to show you. You have to submit yourself to the Christ that's in you. He's not going to break the door down to, to get you to know he's in the house. But he wants to, he's all the power you need in your life. He's everything you need in your life. He just wants you to allow him to live his life through you. All right? Now, here we go. 2 Corinthians 5, 16, once again. Wherefore, from now on, know we no man after flesh. Yea, though we have known Christ after flesh, yet from now on know we him no more. Why? Because you're dead. That's one read. Now, since you're dead, verse 17. Therefore, if any man be in Christ, where are you now? In Where's your soul? In Christ. In Christ. Where's Christ? In your spirit. In your spirit. Come on, Christ is where? In your spirit. He's in your heart. See, if I had to make, if I had to put three zeros in the front of you and put one at the bottom and, and like Mickey Mouse, you know what I mean? Put one up here on the ears, then you got to understand the heart is here. But then the, the, the soul, which is the mind up here, so we're going to get to that part of you. This spirit in you wants to a continuation relationship communication with your mind. That's what he wants. So the enemy give you all this junk and dope and everything else to shut that down. So you do not hear the God that's in you. That's what it's all about. He can't, you can't hear him. Because if he gets you numb, drugged, whatever, you don't hear nothing he's saying. See, that's why you got to understand what's going on. He gets you in religion, traditional men, worldly music, all kind of stuff. He shut down your mind. 
That is how the enemy defeated Adam and Eve. They ate of the tree. Remember, the tree is a man of knowledge of good and evil, just like people today eat of. When they go somewhere and listen to somebody who ain't missing the word, they're eating of the tree of knowledge of good and evil. Otherwise, the knowledge has been corrupted. That is exactly what's going on. But when you find the tree of life and begin to eat from the mind of a person who the knowledge of God flows through, it's called the tree of life. And that is what changes your life. All right, so verse 16 says, Wherefore from henceforth from now on know me no man after flesh. And verse 17 says, Therefore if any man beware in Christ. Who are you now? Who are you? Who are you? Who are you? Who is the new creature? Christ. See, that's why I gave you Galatians 2.20. It's Christ that lives in you. So when the Bible says you are a new creation, that's why you are a new Christ. You are the Christ. The enemy killed one Christ. Now we have millions of Christ. Do you understand that? One seed went into the earth and produced millions. You are called the body of Christ. Christ lives in every one of his body, every part of his body. All right. Uh, and verse number 17, therefore, if any man be in Christ, he's a new creature, a new creation. Now, what happened to your old nature? Old things have passed away. See, your old nature, that's the old you. That's the old you. Old things are passed away. Behold, all things now have become new. So I must allow the new man with all of his new mind and everything about him to come through me. And that is how we work out our salvation. All right, now, next I gave you. Say it, brother, just say it. All right, First Corinthians chapter 2. Thank you, I just couldn't understand the other part. First Corinthians chapter 2. See, I tell him because he with me every morning. He know what I'm saying. He got the notes. 1 Corinthians chapter 2. Now let's start reading with verse number 6, right? 6 to 8? All right. 1 Corinthians chapter 2. Now, let's start reading verse number, I'm sorry. 1 Corinthians chapter 2, verse number 6. Now remember when you read Corinth, Corinth was Jews. Always understand those seven books I gave you, right? Let me say them again in case you didn't get them. The first seven books were to the Jews. You got Galatia, 1st and 2nd Corinthians, 1st and 2nd Thessalonians. Then you got the book of Hebrews and the book of Romans. That was Paul writing to the Jews. He had not been locked up yet. When he got to Acts chapter 20, he locked up. Now he said, I must go to the Gentiles. All right, now you got to understand he got seven books to the Gentile and the, uh, the first book of Ephesians, Colossians, Ephesians, Philippians, Colossians, first and second Timothy, Titus, and Philemon. So those are the book he wrote while he's in prison, all right, to the Gentiles. So when you stand the word of God, you got to understand what, when you read something, what is it coming out of? So I know it's coming out of Corinth, so I, he had to say this to the Jews. I can use it because there is no work involved, okay? So verse number six, let's read it. How be it we speak wisdom among them that are perfect, yet not the wisdom of this world, nor the princes of this world for naught. Now, why he used the prince of this world? He's talking about all these people who crucified Jesus Christ. They were the big shots. Even Paul himself was one of the big shots. He was a Pharisee of the Pharisees, all right? But watch what he's going to say about them. But we speak the wisdom of God how? In a mystery. So otherwise, if you don't have the Holy Ghost, you can't understand this. We speak the wisdom of God in a mystery. So if you don't have the Holy Spirit, you can't understand this because only the Holy Ghost in us is going to let you understand what I'm saying. See, this is what happened with people in the Bible, I mean, who, who, who say they say, and they are saved. They just would not believe until the Spirit come in. If I can keep them sober for three days, if I can have them to come to church for three Sundays, 
if I can have them to get the word today and put it on again tomorrow and put it on again too, to put it again three or four days until you get Christ in you. People don't want to do that. They go to church Sunday, they throw their Bible down, I'll see you next week. It's an ever-revolving door. They never stay long enough to get pregnant. <sighs> you catch on in a minute. They keep dating him. They dating the Lord, but they won't receive him. You know what I mean? All right. First Corinthians chapter 2. All right, verse number 7. We speak the wisdom of God in a mystery, even the hidden wisdom which God ordained before the world to our glory. This is what God ordained for us is the new covenant before our glory. Watch what it says, which none of the princes of this world knew. None of the ones that he's talking about, all these big time people, they did not know about this. For they had not known it. They would have, if they known it, if they had known what God was doing, they would not have crucified the Lord of glory. Well, what is it they did not know? What's your subject? What did they know? Your subject would tell you what they didn't know. They didn't know if they killed Christ at the cross, they would save you. See, they didn't know if we kill Christ at the cross, all men are going to be saved. See, Jesus Christ in Acts 10, 38 went about doing good, healing all those who was oppressed of the devil, for God was with him. So if they had a known, this is the Savior of the world, this is indeed the Christ, that's why they kept asking him. If they had a known, they would not have crucified him because when they crucified him, guess what they did? Now he was able to save all men's souls. Can't you see why they messed up? If we had left him alone. Men could not have been saved. Let me say it again. If they had not killed him, you would not be saved today. It was impossible. There was nothing you could do to be saved. It was impossible. Only once somebody could save us, and that was God himself through his own son. If we could ever get that, that's why you got church today keep saying, all I got to do is confess with my mouth the Lord Jesus and believe in my heart God raised Jesus from the dead, I shall be saved. They're not talking about your salvation. They're talking about saved from wrath. That was Israel. But people take that as they sow salvation. Then they take the Romans 10, 9, and 10, which we, we, we used to do, and say, if you just confess, you cannot be saved. Your soul cannot be saved by Romans 10, 9, and 10 because you already were saved at the cross. Man, I can't, I can't say it aloud enough. God saved all souls at the cross. Nobody is saved in the new covenant. You can't save nobody no more. Let me say it again. You can't save nobody no more. You become an enemy of the cross. That's what God did. He said he, sit on, he sat down at the right hand of God until his enemy be made his footstool. Why is he saying that? Because people are still trying to get people saved. Every time, every week they're trying to get people saved. They baptize you in Jesus' name to get you saved. They're trying to get you to eat the bread off the table. Everything to get you saved. You can't do it. Because it's already done. The thing about it is, people don't know. That's why Paul said, open the eyes of the blind. Open your eyes, turn them from darkness to light, turn them from the power of Satan. They are blind, they are dumb, they are ignorant of the truth. But if Jesus said, and you shall know the truth, and the truth shall make you free. The gospel of Christ is the truth. Until you know it, you can't get free. So that's why I'm here. All right, so 1 Corinthians chapter 2 and verse number Eight, which none of the princes of this world knew. Had they known, they would not have crucified the Lord of glory. I'm going to, I'm going to stop right there uh, because Paul said, we, well, I'm going to read verse 12. Verse 12. Go down to verse 12. 1 Corinthians 2, 12. You can read the rest of it later. I just want to show you something in verse 12. He says in verse 12, now we read, now we have received, now we, we read. I'm telling you, you got to receive. See, I'm showing you, you don't have because in the old covenant, you have not because you ask not. New covenant, you don't have because you don't receive. Let me say it again. In the old covenant, you have not because you ask not. That's what the old covenant said. You ask not. You have not because you ask not to conceive it upon your own lust. You don't have. In new covenant, you don't have because you won't receive. 
Nobody can make this happen to you. You have to receive what God has done for your soul. All right? Now, 1 Corinthians 2, 12, read. Now we have received. Come on, say it. Now we have received the, not the spirit of the world, but the spirit which is of God. Come on, you got to receive the Holy Spirit. I'm showing you the only way you can get the Holy Spirit, you got to receive him. He's already in the Christ that's in you. If Christ is in you, but he cannot come forth in you. The life cannot come forth in you until you receive the Christ that's in you. If you don't receive the Christ in you, the Holy Ghost cannot minister to your soul. That's why every time you exalt the Lord and praise the Lord and worship the Lord, the Spirit of God releases in your spirit. He can't do it unless you want this. All right. Now, go down in verse 15, because I'm, I'm going to teach on that. Verse 15 and 16, 7 chapter, a little later on, not today. Read it. But he that is spiritual minded, that's really what it's saying. He that is spiritual minded judges all things, yet he himself is just of no man. For who has known the mind of the Lord that he may instruct him? But we have the, the mind of Christ. That is where we are headed in this place. All right. But we got to make sure you have Christ in you first. All right. God already saved you at the cross. He done all that. Now all you got to do is receive it. All right. Let's go to what, what we got out here. First Peter 3, chapter 3, verse 20. Thank you very much. And First Peter 3, 20. I'm going to show you in First Peter chapter 3, and verse 20, what happened. Old Testament was about souls. That's why you can't be saved in the Old Covenant. That's why they could not be saved in the Old Covenant because only eight people, they found righteous. In the whole Old Covenant, only eight people was found righteous and they was in the boat with Noah. That's why nobody can be saved. That's why I'm going to show you after a while, they're going to ask Jesus Christ, well, who can be saved? Do I have any more verses out there? Anything else? Romans 10, 1 through 4. Okay, we're going to do Romans 10, 1 through 4 next. And then I want you to put under that, because we're going to go and show you this man, uh, Matthew chapter 19. Put that down. Matthew chapter 19. I'll find the verse after a while. I know it's Matthew 19. Uh, oh, verse 16. We're going to go down. Matthew 19, 16. And then we're going to read from verse 23 to 25. I think. Well, that book, we'll get it. All right. Now, let's go to 1 Peter chapter 3. In the whole Old Testament, eight people saved. So that's why people are still trying to get people saved. Ain't that something? It's impossible. All right. Now, how was the eight people saved in the Old Covenant? What you get ready to hear. This is one of the people still telling you about baptizing water. That's what they teach it. It's one of the scriptures when people go to church, ap apostolic churches, or people who... Talk about salvation by water. This is one of the scriptures they use. First Peter chapter 3. And what, I, what verse I say? Uh, all right. Now, I'm not going to read the rest before because I'm not here to try to straighten nobody out. Verse number 20. With some time with disobedience. I got to go back to verse 18 anyway. I didn't want to do it. Go back to verse 18. All right. Verse 18, read it. For Christ also has once suffered for sins, the just for the unjust. See, they don't get that part. Why did he do that? that he might bring us to God, that he, he's the only one that could, being put to death in the flesh, but quickened by the Spirit. Now he's going to say, by which also, by Christ's death, death, and resurrection, he went and preached to the spirits in prison, which sometime were disobedient when the long-suffering of God waited to the Noah, to Noah the be of the ark. That's what he was waiting for, to Noah the be of the ark. People were still dying. Just like it was in Thessalonians, this will show you what happened in Thessalonians. People still dying before Jesus' death, death, and resurrection. People still dying before that. Lazarus died before that. Many people died before that. That Jesus didn't raise from the dead. All right? But he got them at the resurrection. So here, in verse 20, it says, With some time were disobedient when once the long suffering of God waited in the days of Noah while the ark was being prepared. See, people died before their ark was finished. They wanted to get on board, but they died. They couldn't get on that ark. That is, eight souls were saved by water. And so people would take that and say, see there, 
they're saved by water baptism. See, that's what I'm trying to say. Most, so many people lose, lose out on salvation because they don't believe Christ has saved them. See, that's a part of your faith. You must believe God has saved you, all right? Before you can receive Christ in your heart, you got to believe he has already saved me. That's why I showed you, by grace, you are saved. Not going to be, all right? It's a gift of God if you receive it, all right? Now, uh, did he call like figure in verse 21? I'm not reading no more of that. That is not my message today. All right, did I give you anything else? Romans 10, 1 through 4, thank you. Now let's go back to Romans 10, 1 through 4. Why was Israel not saved? Why Israel was not saved? See, you got to understand what he's saying. He's giving all these types and showing you why Israel was not saved. Israel was in the old covenant. They were given an old covenant law. Why were they not saved? Verse 1, read. Brothers, my heart desired and prayer to God for Israel that they what? Might be saved. Now watch this. We're talking about Israel. The most religious person in the whole Bible was not saved. Why? Because they was in the old covenant and they did not obey their covenant. Hold right there. Let's back, back to Romans chapter 9, verse 30. Back to Romans chapter 9, verse 30. Now we're showing you why they was not saved. And we're going to show you what happened to people that were not saved. The only reason they were not saved in the Old Testament, they did not believe the truth, which is Christ's death, death, and resurrection. So you got a lot of people that go to church, but they don't tell you they're saved by Christ's death, death, and resurrection. They don't tell you they're saved by the cross. They say they're saved by their own confession and their own belief. All right. Romans chapter 9, verse 30. There we go. Read. What shall we see then? Read. What shall we say then that the Gentiles, which follow not after righteousness, have attained? What did we talk about the Gentiles during the days of Paul? Okay, not after the cross. We, we t not, not after Christ came back. Talking about the people who were Gentiles at that day. They were Grecians. All right. What shall we say then that the Gentiles, which follow not after righteousness, have attained to righteousness? Even the righteousness, watch this, which is of faith. Remember, that's what they attain. Not the righteousness that you have. You have the faith of the Son of God. Okay. Verse number 31, read. But Israel was followed after the law of righteousness. What was Israel following? The law, the law of righteousness. That's the thing they got back there in Deuteronomy. You go back there, they call it the law of righteousness. They live by the law of righteousness. From all the way back there from uh, Joshua and all back, they had the law of righteousness. They got that on the law. But Israel followed after the law of righteousness. Watch what happened. They have not attained to the law of righteousness. They can't get it. What? Next verse will tell you. Wherefore, because they sought it not by faith, he asked the question. He said, no. But as it were by the works of the law. They still trying to keep the law. For they stumbled at that stumbling stone. Who was the stumbling stone? Christ. They stumbled at Christ. As it is written, Behold, I lay in Zion a stumbling stone and a rock of offense. Whoso believeth on him shall not be ashamed. See, they were still trying to do it without Christ. They wanted to do it themselves. That's why they didn't do it. That's what Romans 10, 9, and 10 is telling you. That's, you're going into that now. That's what they're trying to do. That's why they wasn't saved. And now here, people today still trying to be saved. Thank God he got us out of it. Come on, thank God. Come on, clap in. I thank God that he got us out of that. Romans chapter 10, verse 1. Now, let's go into it. He said, Brothers, my heart desired and prayer to God for Israel is that they might be saved. For I bear them record that they have a zeal. See, they are very zealous of God. They serve the Lord. They're in every service. They do everything, uh, but not according to knowledge. What was their problem? Not according to knowledge. They did not have the knowledge of God. And I'm going to show you something. Uh, that if you don't have the knowledge of God, you cannot receive uh, God's salvation. See, I give you the knowledge of God so you can do what? Receive God's salvation. They could not receive the salvation because Hosea 4, 6 says, my people are destroyed for lack of knowledge. They didn't want nobody to tell them nothing. They always thought they was right. Leave me alone, I am already got it. I know, I'm, I know what I'm doing is right. See, they reject the knowledge of God. 
You can't reject the knowledge of God and then receive God's salvation. Watch what they did. They says, for I bear them record that they have a zeal of God, but are not according to knowledge. For they being ignorant of God's righteousness. See, they don't want the knowledge. They're ignorant of God's right. How many know Christ is God's righteousness? I said, how many know Christ is God's righteousness? I said, how many know Christ is God's righteousness? See, the key is when you, when you out here trying to live right yourself, you're trying to make sure that I don't, I dot every I, cross every T, and you know what you're going to do? You're going to look at everybody else like the sinners. Because you think you're doing it by the book. You got to understand something. It's not you that live no more. It's the Christ in you that lives through you. Otherwise, you ought to live right, but don't give yourself the praise like you're doing it. It's not you that live anymore. It's the Christ that lives in you. You let him live his life through you, not you doing anything. But if you exalt yourself like you're doing, you, don't, you know how to do that. Them folks over there going to hell because they ain't living right. See, you, you don't understand. The only way you live in the way you live in is because Christ is in you. Get Christ in that person, they'll live right. That's what you're supposed to think about. All right, here in verse number four said Christ, let's read it. Now, verse number three, again. For they being ignorant of God's righteousness and going about to establish their own righteousness, what happened? They have not submitted themselves to the righteousness of God. Watch what they're going to say. For Christ is the end of the law for righteousness. Why? Because first Corinthians, let me show it to you. First Corinthians 1 Corinthians 1.30. 1 Corinthians chapter 1 and verse 30. See, you don't have no righteousness no more. Remember, you dead. Christ is your righteousness now. Come on, let's go to it. 1 Corinthians 1 and 30. Read it. But of him are you in Christ Jesus. Say, where are you? In you in Christ Jesus, who of God is made on us what? Christ is made on us who? You don't have no wisdom. So when God give you the word, stop acting like you're that smart. It's not you. It's Christ in you. Christ is the wisdom of God in you. Also, Christ is next. God's righteousness in you. Christ is what? God's sanctification in you. What is Christ? He's God's redemption. So because you can live right, don't boast yourself. It's not you that live. It's Christ that lives in you. Give the Lord a big hand. See, a lot of people say, holding it. do you believe in holding? Yeah, that's who Christ is in me. It's not, I wear my dress or Satan. I don't wear no makeup. See, that's not holiness. That's flesh, trying to glory in God's face. All right? Now, I got to take you somewhere, Matthew 19. That's all I can do today. Whatever I got, you got to hold it to the next service. Matthew chapter 19. In Matthew chapter 19, this man came to Jesus, and they asked, he asked Jesus how to be saved. Now, Matthew 19, we're going to do verse 16 first, and then I want to go down to verse 25. Matthew 19, 16. I do this all the time because you got to get this. Matthew 19, 16. Read. Are you there? Read. And behold, one came to him, said, Good master, what good thing shall I do that I may have eternal life? That's the same thing that people are saying all through the Bible. If you go to Matthew, if you go to Acts 16, that's what the man said. What shall I do to be saved? That's all he's saying. What can I do, good master, that I may have eternal life? He's talking about how can I be saved? What's what Jesus say to him? Once he said to him, he said to all of us, in verse number 27. I'm sorry, 25. 25. I can't go back no further. 25. Matthew 16, 25. 1925. 1925. On the scripture, on the screen. Matthew 19:25. There we go. Read. When his disciples heard it, they were exceedingly amazed and said, Who then can be saved? He, he said, if, except a camel go through the eye of a needle. He's talking about how impossible it was. That's what he was talking about. It, they asked him about a rich man. See, this rich man couldn't be saved. So Jesus says, in verse 24, again I say to you, is it easy for a camel to go through the eye of a needle for a rich man to enter into the kingdom of God? This man is rich, but he can't enter the kingdom of God. They were like, well, who then can be saved? If this rich man can't be saved, and he just said he keeps the commandment. Watch what Jesus says. Verse 28. No, that's not who I am. 
And verse 26 is the last verse. Why wasn't he saved? Here we go, read. But Jesus beheld him and said, come, I need you to read. But Jesus beheld, I need you to read. I need you to read. Never think somebody else is going to do it. You do it. But Jesus beheld them and said, with men, this is impossible. Say impossible, impossible. in the Old Testament for men to be saved. See, it was impossible, see? You couldn't be saved in the Old Covenant. Why? Because only one man could save you. You could not save yourself. See, when you say, I confess with my mouth, you're saying, I saved myself. When I confess with my mouth, when I believed in my heart that Jesus is Lord, and I believe into righteousness, I conf my confession is made to salvation. you saying you saved yourself. When you're saying, I was baptized in water in Jesus' name, you're saying, I saved myself. I didn't even have a Savior. I just got baptized. <laughs> da, 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 da. That's what people think salvation. As a matter of fact, I'm not going to say that. But that's what you got to understand. Now, I'm going to, I want to read down to verse uh, number 28 because I'm going to use this in my next teaching. Verse number 27, read. Then answered Peter and said to him, Behold, we have forsaken all and followed thee. What shall we have therefore? Now watch this verse because I'm going to use it in the next teaching. Verse 28. And Jesus said to them, Verily I say to you, that you which have followed me, comma, in the regeneration. What, are they, what is grace? When you're in grace, you are in the regeneration. That means every man has already been born again. See, you got to understand what happened when Christ went to the cross. If they had known, they would not have crucified the Lord of glory. Because when he died, he saved all men. To save all men means he reborn them. You are a new creation in Christ. You already been born again. That's why you got, we stopped singing that song. We used to sing it. We used to sing born again. We used to sing you must be born again. We used to sing also you must be saved. See, that's why we don't say not putting them down. We didn't know, especially me. Because you were saved at the cross. Say it, I was saved at the cross. Say, I'm saved now. Right, so you don't say you shall be saved. You must be saved. Can you hear the difference now? We sing that because we, are, we didn't know that we were singing that what we already were. So, so you can't say to people you must be because Christ died for all men. So Christ died and saved all men. That is so powerful. You know why? If you don't have the spirit, you can't believe it. That one man died and saved all. Now you can believe Adam got us in this man. Oh, praise God, Adam, if it wasn't for Adam. People already got that. But they won't brag on Christ like that. One man disobedient made me a sinner. One man obedient made me righteous. See, if we could just accept him for what he's done. Somebody give the Lord a great big hand. Somebody said we are in the regeneration. We'll pick up on that the next service. Let's go, let's uh, stand up on your feet. We're going to go to 1 Corinthians 15 as we close out this morning's service. We are now in the regeneration. So you're not trying to get people born again because you're already in the regeneration. See, have you ever understood that the dispensation of grace is called the regeneration? Amen. First Corinthians. Get a lot of great big hands. First Corinthians chapter 15 and verse 1 says, Moreover, brothers, I declare to you the gospel which I preach to you, which also you have received. You already received it. And where you stand, by which also you are saved. He didn't say you're going to be saved. By the gospel of Christ, you are saved. But you got, can't let anybody take it from you. If you keep in memory what I preach to you, unless you believe in vain. For I deliver you first of all that which I also received, how that Christ died for our sins according to the scripture, and that he was buried, and that he rose again the third day according to the scripture. You've got to believe the word of God mean to receive the word of God and don't let anybody tell you something different.
take my time is up. I thank you for yours. And the door of faith is open unto you.